I'm speaking to you now from Old Economy at Ambridge, Pennsylvania. Uh, over here at the side is uh, curator uh, Dr. Lawrence Thurman, who is uh, sharpening a tool that was used. Uh, Dr. Thurman, uh, what, what, this looks like a lathe tool you have here. Yes, it is, Ray. The cabinet shop here is uh, very interesting to most people because uh, they see the hand tools being used in all kinds of work that uh, all the grandfathers did and their great-grandfathers. This was a, a foot-powered uh, Yes, this piece. is a foot-powered piece, and I particularly don't care too much about it uh, to grind with because it takes a great deal of effort, you see. It takes a little bit of coordination, too, doesn't And it? a great deal of coordination. Now, this is the fine stone. Of course, here's the rough one. And most of these uh, grinders of the Harmony Society are set in bone, uh, animal bone, so that they have a built-in uh, bearing, as it were, that never wears out. Now, on, on this large tool, sometimes you would, you would use many tools such as this because they had a tool for everything. This is a two-man lathe. One worked on the opposite side, and a young man, uh, preferably one with very strong legs, stood on a box and worked this so that it swung around. Now, we can go over here and look at the lathe, which I think that I can operate fairly well in turning. Lathe, this is a one-man lathe, and all of the fine spindles and the very fine work that is done here by the Harmony Society about 120 years ago was done on lathes such as this. And we'll get it going the right way. You see how it cuts the wood even today. Now this one does not put a strain on an individual and I could cut on this for quite a few hours. Now we do use this particular lathe ray to replace various spindles that are broken here from time to oh, time. so you make them and the same? We make them with the same tools and uh, from white pine, and we do indeed have a stock of white pine, and usually we can match the wood. Now, the bench here in front of us is a very interesting thing because many things can be done on it. Mm -hmm. Actually, it is a Schneidenbach, or a cutting block. Now, the piece of wood was placed under the, in this manner. Below you see the pressure. It holds it right down. It just held down. And you could take and cut. Well, they might have made their shingles on that, for instance. They would make their shingles on this. Now, the shingles, of course, you see the, thin, how the thin end. they are on one end. So they would place a large piece of wood here. Take a particular, a peculiar type of tool. Now this is for a barrel stave, but it is a little different in design, as you see, from the one that we're using now. And they would take a tool such as this, which would lay on the piece of wood and pull it. And actually, if we had a block so high, this thing would break into shingles. Uh -huh. Now, it's not comparable to them being cut. You'd have to have a good straight grain, but you just split them Yes, right and they used white pine mm -hmm. for their grain rather than the red cedar that we use today. Right. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Thurman. Of course, when you come to a museum such as this, there are a great many things to see, and maybe we can come back.